Okay, I'm going to take a few minutes to explain fatty acid structure. Um, so fatty acids, as their name says, have a fatty part and an acid part. Um, the fatty part is hydrophobic and the acid part is hydrophilic. So hydrophobic means it hates water, hydrophilic means it likes water. So fatty acids then have this unique property in which part of it is water fearing and part of it is water loving. So let's take a look at a fatty acid. Um, so fatty acids are lots of carbons with an acid group on them. So here's my acid group and one way of representing all these carbons is with this zigzag. Now, this zigzag, so what I've drawn here is a saturated fatty acid. This zigzag is my fatty part and this C double bond O, OH is my acid part. Now, another way of drawing a fatty acid is actually representing all the carbons and hydrogens that are shown without being shown in this zigzag. So each bend in this chain is a carbon. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So I'm going to draw my seven carbons. So that gives me eight total, including this first one. And each carbon has to, to be saturated with hydrogens, hence the name saturated fatty acid. Uh, a carbon must have four bonds in order to be a happy camper. So since each carbon has two bonds attached to its two carbon neighbors, that means each carbon then also needs two hydrogens. And once I've drawn all these hydrogens, you'll see that each one of these carbons has four bonds. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, etc. Now this last one, being that there is no carbon here, it still needs four bonds, so the last one actually will get a third hydrogen attached. So this is a saturated fatty acid, same as this, but this one is rep all the bonds and atoms have been represented. Um, when you make a model of a fatty acid, you want to make sure that you're representing all the bonds and atoms and not just showing a zigzag. So let's take a look at an unsaturated fatty acid. Now first I'm going to draw a zigzag, which obviously is much easier. Now with an unsaturated fatty acid, an unsaturated fatty acid has a double bond between a couple carbons. This double bond means that this chain is not going to be saturated with hydrogen, hence the name unsaturated because it's not saturated with hydrogen. So if I were to draw this, again each bend in the chain is a carbon. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons here. And my double bond is between the, so I'll count one, two, three, one, two, three, it's between the third and fourth carbons. So again, all of my carbons that are single bonded are going to have two hydrogens attached. The final carbon is going to have three hydrogens attached. But these two carbons that are next to the double bond each only have one hydrogen attached because this is unsaturated. The chain is not saturated with hydrogen because we have a double bond instead. Now a couple of neat things about saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are found um, in cows, um, so like cheese, 
is saturated fat, butter is saturated fat, goat cheese is going to be saturated fat. These animals that obviously chicken and I don't know, buffalo, all these red meats or meats, mammals are going to be sat more saturated fats. Um, unsaturated fats are going to be like fish, um, plants. So notice this is butter. This is oil. Saturated fats, being that they're this straight chain of hydrocarbons, pack together very well. Because they pack together so well, they're solid at room temperature. So they're kind of like this. They just line up, no problem. Our unsaturated fatty acids, because of that double bond, there's like a kink in the fatty acid chain. And kinks aren't going to lay flat. They're going to be, well, there's a kink in the chain. It's not going to lay nice and flat, so it makes it a liquid at room temperature.